Hello, podcast listener. Welcome to another episode of What Scares Us, a podcast from the Ann Arbor District Library in Michigan, where four friends share the movies that make us wonder what has been lying on the ice cream and make us think twice about that quickie in the graveyard. <laughs> I'm Christopher, and I'm joined by three other staff members of the library. My name is Matt. I'm Allison. And I'm Amanda. This time we watched Phantasm from 1979. To set the scene for what was happening in 1979, the movies Alien, Driller Killer, Zombie, Nosferatu, and Hair all came out. It was the year of Three Mile Island, Rapper's Delight, and the attack on President Carter by a swamp rabbit while he was fishing. <laughs> <laughs> very, <laughs> very briefly, Phantasm is about two brothers and their friend Reggie, the ice cream man, who investigate a series of strange incidents at the local funeral home. It was written and directed by Don Coscarelli, who went on to make Beastmaster and Bubba Hotep, and starred Angus Scrim as the tall man, Reggie Bannister as Reggie the ice cream man, Michael Baldwin as Mike, and someone I don't remember who was Jody, Mike's brother. Bill Thornbury. Bill Thornbury. They all acted in other movies of Cuscarelli's. This took more than a year to make, and much of the script was changed and rewritten during that time. I'm dedicating this pick to my brother Kevin. Way back in the 80s, Kevin brought home a rental, VCR, and two movies. One of them was Phantasm. So it was either the first or the second rental movie I ever watched. This movie and its ad on TV was horribly terrifying, especially the scene with arms reaching from under a bed to grab someone mm -hmm. lying there. So that's my impression and my history with this movie. I'm curious what everyone else's uh, initial impression and experience with the movie is. I realized about 30 minutes into this movie that I had not seen it. Oh. Um, I thought I had because it's considered a classic or something. Um, <laughs> and then I remembered that my friend from college, who I used to watch all kinds of horror movies with, told me that if there was one franchise that I could skip all of the movies, it was the Phantasm <laughs> series. Um, I don't disagree with him. But uh, yeah, I, I've I've certain and I have certainly heard of this movie before. I recognized the tall man. I also recognized uh, Reggie's quote by the fireplace about going up and stomping the shit out of him because it <laughs> appears in a song by a heavy metal band that I really like called Municipal Waste. And uh, but yeah, that that's fine. Oh, and I knew about the the silver ball because, I mean, how do you not talk about that? <laughs> Whatever the hell that thing's called. Um, <laughs> I have I don't remember hearing about this movie before. I don't know how because I've seen several lists of you know must sees or must do, must not sees and didn't ring any bells for me. I didn't even know it was a series. Um, so it's kind of interesting going in blind. And I did what I usually don't do is I read the synopsis. Usually, if there's a movie I haven't seen, I don't want to really like reading the synopsis for it. So I decided to read the synopsis on the back of the DVD box before I sat down to watch it and. The synopsis on the back of the DVD box is very wonderfully written, and it sounds very enticing. I was like, yeah, heck yeah, this will be a fun little ride. <laughs> and then I watched the movie, and I was like, oh, they really they really like <laughs> inflated that description to make it sound much more than it was. Because th so many things <laughs> that they talk about don't even happen for like most of the movie. Um, <laughs> so it was, again, I, like, I do like watching some really terrible horror movies movies and horror adjacent from like the 70s and 80s because you know they're not made to be amazing a lot of these ones this one was all right i'm not putting this in my uh my box of to be watched yearly or perhaps ever again um, i'm not going to explore the sequels um but no i i enjoyed it i have, I have some good little notes i have some funny little things that happen that <laughs> we'll talk about later um yeah it was interesting it was a weird little movie and i just i don't even know what i it's a weird little movie, um, but also I feel like other people have seen this movie or heard of this movie like more than I expected to, and I'm like, why does everybody know about this this weird ass movie? Um, 
so yeah, I can't wait to hear what y'all think. And I have no idea what rating I would give it at this point. So <laughs> this is your opportunity to sway me. Wow. Yeah. Allison, what about you? <laughs> um, I had seen it once before, maybe six or eight months ago for the first time. It was on some list that I saw or I'm always looking for <laughs> horror movies that will actually scare me. I, it might have come up in one of those lists, but um, it it did not. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Um, although this time when I watched it, it did. Uh, I, I bumped it up a f- like full number because surprisingly, it makes more sense if you watch it a second time. <laughs> well, slightly more sense. Sure. Um, I do weirdly like it i guess i wouldn't (laughs) i I don't know that i'm gonna watch it again but uh, over the weekend i was thinking of watching all five in the series so i don't know what that means but um yeah it's it's something (laughs) can't wait to dive into it yeah well i will say you said you wanted it to scare you um where did i read that Oh, never mind. Oh, well, one of the <laughs> taglines is something like, if it doesn't scare oh. you, you're already dead. If this one doesn't like scare you, you're already Fuck. dead. Yeah. So oh, I guess no. I died. We're a bunch <laughs> of zombies hosting the show today. Welcome, everybody. <laughs> Happy Halloween. <laughs> so I'm the only one that grew up seeing the ads on TV for this. Yeah. I mean, man, did it capture your imagination? Those arms in the ad on TV coming out from under the bed. And when you watch it now... It's not that scary, and there are only two guys, and they're not quite getting a hold of someone anyway. <laughs> but, boy, did that did that just electrify your imagination as a kid. I'm glad oh. I didn't see that scene ahead of time, because when that happened, it was very unexpected was to cool. me. And I really liked it. It's one of my favorite scenes, and I just love, I was like, oh, yeah, here we go. This is cool. Yeah. I feel like that's also such a classic fear, arms <clears throat> under the bed. Mm-hmm. There's a scene in The Sixth Sense that, like, just destroyed me as a kid. I know the one. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Although watching it as an adult, I'm like, really? Not so that much. Was, yeah. 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 Okay. Well, let's dive into the show that is Phantasm. <laughs> so right away, we have no opening credits, and we get right into the action. And by action... <laughs> we're talking sex. <laughs> yep, that's right. We've got a sex scene with Tommy and... He is going at it with some woman, and there's some awful dialogue, and then the next thing we see is she pulls out a knife and stabs him right through the heart. And then the next thing we see, of course, is this kind of juxtaposition that she seems to be some old guy, (laughs) and we later find out that it's really the tall man. Mm Mm-hmm. Right away, I thought this was an interesting scene because here's this odd kind of queer trans thing going on and the movie never comments about it. I mean, it's it's odd. There, there are so many disparate elements that are kind of poorly connected <laughs> and not explained whatsoever, just thrown into this heap. It, it's either fun and successful and you overlook all that or it just utterly fails <laughs> so it is interesting because he does have some sort of like shapeshifter quality but it he doesn't change into anything else it's just like <laughs> very strange looking old man or <laughs> lady with purple eyeshadow right the lady in lavender <laughs> lady in lavender. Right. I was gonna say She's lady in lavender right, <laughs> right exactly so that's an interesting feature for a horror villain. Mm-hmm. Quite an interesting opening, too. The first time I was like, this is gross. And not in the way I usually like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Chop off someone's arm or something. This is. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Exactly. I did think it was a neat scene, like the slow pan in the cemetery, and then you've got the headstones with just people's feet hanging out. Like, you don't see them at <laughs> first. You just can guess what's going on behind the, the tombstones. But I thought it was a neat little opening. Um, it kind of set the stage for like, okay, some weird stuff's going to happen. Yeah. Boy, horror movies really love death and sex, <laughs> at least of that era. I don't know if that's yeah. still a thing anymore. I think oh. they're very tired. It's all about trauma now. R- yes. Yeah. Right. A weird metaphor for trauma. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, uh, Jody, eventually, Jody's the older brother. He eventually is on his way into the funeral home for his friend, Tommy, who died, who was the one having sex. And Jody's on his way in. His little brother, Mike, is not allowed to go to the funeral. And as Jody's walking around looking at the... Um, the, it's part of the mausoleum. He's looking at his father's bot. Well, what's he looking at? I don't know. The, the drawer. He's looking at the yeah. plot. And I forget what that. I forget what those are called. Look, it's a little plaque thing that says Jody and Ann Pearson or yeah, Joy and right. Ann Pearson. Jody Senior. Right. I had a question about that though, because there's two names mm-hmm. and what looks like space for one body. Mm-hmm. So, how are they arranged in there? Or yeah, stacked. Are they are they really? I, no, I don't. They're saving space. Oh. <laughs> That's a really big mausoleum. There's a lot of drawers and names yeah. in there. Yes. Lots of hallways. Yes. But as <laughs> as Jody's walking around, he runs into the tall man with this great line, and he says, The funeral is about to begin. Sir, <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the old, he, that's like one of two things he says out loud in this, right? He has a few lines. Okay, okay. boy, boy, boy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think he was. I didn't. For me, the tall man was not very menacing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I did like the what added to that was when they the sound, the music that was playing, like the sound effects, and then like the sound effect of his feet walking. That made it sound creepier, but. I didn't find him scary no. or menacing or very tall. Yeah, I don't why do they call him a tall man? He's not th- he's not that tall, is he? Well, no. so <laughs> you probably read that Coscarelli gave him extra small clothes. Yeah. And <laughs> put him on an apple box sometimes. That's he right, wore like tall heels, shoes too. Right. So, I guess he was 6'4", so that's pretty yeah. tall. Okay, that's tall. That's tall. But, but those... he's still getting the Tom Cruise treatment. <laughs> <laughs> but those those little clothes that he was wearing, <laughs> I think that really adds to the odd effect. There is one scene that I thought he is really creepy in, and mm. we'll we'll get to that. Mm-hmm. I read online that, um, like, I guess a lot of sort of preteen boys really love this movie because there's could... boobs in the first scene, yeah. and they are like. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I did notice Twice. that. <laughs> they're, also, they're not the actresses. It was a body double. Yeah, right. But it, that kind of like made this movie make a little bit more sense to me because if you are um, Mike's age and you're following Mike as a character, like mm-hmm. would I maybe find the tall man more menacing? Yes. Maybe. Mm-hmm. I found Snape in Harry Potter very menacing. Right. And looking oh, back, yeah, it's for like, sure. Why? <laughs> There's there, nothing there. There was a review that I read somewhere that described this as an R-rated movie made for 11-year-old boys, yes. specifically. And you're right. It's like the things that happen, it would be scary if you were 11 years old and nobody believed you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, which is common. That's like also the like eternal kid fear is like, well, we can't rely on the grown-ups and this thing is going to get me. So what do I do now? Yep, Wait. And that, that's how it plays out. I was 11. <laughs> you were 11. That's the thing. I think, I think maybe the thing with this movie is you had to have been young to like on your first viewing for it to like get you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know. So I probably wasn't 11 when I first saw it, but I was 11 when it came out. And I, I mean, it still had a big impact on me. Especially yeah. if you saw the trailers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And watched it with your brother. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> So we get some funny lines here. Uh, The dialogue in this movie is not great. (laughs) It's so bad. Yeah. And some of the reactions are really stilted. First of all, I didn't even know why Jody is talking about this, but he's referring to his parents' death, and he's referring to the fact that his little brother is not invited to Tommy's funeral. And he says, in two years, I guess you can just about get over anything. Yeah. Yeah. Yowch. It's like, wait, what? <laughs> then why isn't he at the funeral if he's over it? Yeah. It just doesn't make sense to me. He, well, also, he also says at one point, I just don't get off on funerals, man. <laughs> 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 no fucking shit. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody does. <laughs> he also they says get- something about, like, like what a way to go. And I thought he, somehow he knew that he was, like, having sex in the graveyard. It's like... 
Right, but hmm, then it, but then he it's, wouldn't have. They were under the impression that he killed himself. Yeah. Somehow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, after this scene, we see Mike walking home. And there is a really cool shot of that. I think it's a red hand on a sign. And it took me a minute to realize what that had to do with anything. We see it again later, too. Do we? Because I didn't notice it this early on, but doesn't it come in at the end? Hmm. I don't remember this. Wow. I do remember it the first time. I don't know if I remember it another time, but go on. What, oh, what a, does it? What does it mean? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so it's because it's the fortune teller's house. Oh, uh, right, the and Ozzy Osbourne-looking she, lady. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. She does look like Ozzy, <laughs> <laughs> and her little granddaughter Star Girl is there uh, because she's got the star, star tattoo. Oh, I thought that was like an official credited name. No, or something. no. <laughs> I was gonna draw one of those on for today, and I forgot. <laughs> For all the podcast listeners. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So I immediately thought of Kyle MacLachlan putting his hand in the box in Dune in this scene. Uh, Yeah. Which was much, much later. But the book was much, much earlier. Right. So I don't know. I didn't see any reference that this was an inspiration for Don Coscarelli or not. It had to have been, because I think the line is even something like, fear is in the mind. Yeah. It's like, oh, you're almost almost there. You almost owe money for that. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah. Right. Yeah, fear is the killer. Right. And I think this scene would be better if it actually had some relevance later on in the movie. But again, it's just (laughs) another weird thing that happens there's a lot of like little things like oh that'll come up later that'll mean something no nope Nope. (laughs) it's a throwaway (laughs) nope (laughs) (laughs) i love there's a line like oh yeah it was a good idea to not let your little brother come to the funeral and see tommy like this cut to tommy looking mostly fine like right really not that different Mm -hmm. from 10 minutes ago in the movie (laughs) right pale (laughs) and then mike comes out of the bushes with binoculars yes (laughs) Right. Sticking way Try to out. Keep too. me away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I should go back one scene. Right. Part of the reason that Mike is going to the fortune teller is because Mike used his binoculars and he saw the tall man load Tommy's body inside the coffin that weighed 500 pounds into the back of a hearse with his bare hands. <laughs> right. So we know something's not quite normal with the tall mm-hmm. guy. I love how he pulls his binoculars down. You can see him mouth. What? The I fuck? know, right? Yeah. <laughs> and they, they they get a lot of mileage out of it. They show it to us twice. They show it to us in a flashback. Too. Yeah. <laughs> I really like Mike's energy here because he has such useful, youthful charisma. He's got such purpose. He knows he's right. He's got to convince the grown-ups. Um, and part of the the reason too, I think, why he's smiling is like he. Like the comment about taking two years to get over something, like Mike is still grieving like his parents and he's afraid Jody's leaving. So th- he spends the whole movie like still worrying that his brother is going to leave him, which, right. you know, eventually we get to that. But so for me, part of the urgency of watching him like spying the funeral is he's keeping an eye on his brother. Like, and then once he goes to the fortune teller lady and finds out that, doesn't she tell him that Jody's leaving? She's like, don't worry about it though, because he's going to take you with you. No, he's not. Yeah. <laughs> right. That is not part of the plan at all. Right. It's fine. He, he'll be a fine orphan. It's Yeah. But I liked his energy. And I liked the early scenes of him just like riding his motorbike around the, the graveyard. <laughs> yeah. That was cool. It was giving me um, Bad News Bears vibes. What is yes. it? With the, the, that, like that punk kid like on the motorcycle and he's like smoking and driving his bike through the baseball field. <laughs> They're like the same age-ish, you know, the characters. So right. I got total Bad News Bears vibes. <laughs> well... Think about, you know, this kid and the character, Mike, you know, 13 years old, gets to drive a barracuda around town, gets to shoot all these guns, (laughs) ride a dirt bike, and drink beer. Yeah, his brother's a great parent. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Hey, in two years, (laughs) you can get over just about anything. (laughs) Um, I love that Christopher loves a movie with small hooded people running around. As soon as I saw the first one in the graveyard, I was like, yeah, that tracks. 
Of course. <laughs> oh, from Don't Look Now. That's right. right. Yeah. <laughs> See, all I can think of is Jawas. That's what I wrote right, down, Jawas. Yeah. I called them Ewoks last week. A uh, month like a big dumbass. <laughs> oh, it's, but you're not the only one that, I, that that's. I see that all over the place in, oh, really? on the internet. People talking about. Oh yeah, they remind me of the Ewoks, but they're little Jawas. Yeah. Right. They yeah. Even, well, they they're don't make quite the same two noise. different. No, they're not. They don't look the same whatsoever. Hmm? To Jawas. Ewoks and Jawas. Oh, oh I'm saying the the, the things in this movie look. Like oh, Jawas. this movie looks like yeah. Jawas. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. There was also Jawas and some musicians tour video or something around this time but then he had to stop because he's going to get sued <laughs> huh on the back of the box the description that was so enticing to me the line it says is the local mortuary hides a legion of hooded dwarf creatures and i was like oh neat you barely see them you don't even know anything about <laughs> it's so minimal i want more f- i wanted more of them to do i don't know it was very confusing <laughs> yeah to do what <laughs> Something. (laughs) (laughs) Anything else. (laughs) They they were barely in there. Right. (laughs) (laughs) That noise was so human-like. Yeah. 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 It was dumb. The music in this is good. I... My first note is, God, the music is oppressive in the funeral home. It made me so uncomfortable the whole time. I wouldn't say it's good music, but like... Uh, the whole time just like eh. yeah the the every time the music would pipe up throughout this movie though i was like this is they really should have worked on this a little harder it just sounds like halloween to me like a halloween the main movie. theme yeah. kind of yeah. sounds like a like a bad sound like halloween mm-hmm. which it's funny because i bet that they hadn't heard it because they produced it before before I but then like, all of the actual scoring that happens in it is some of the worst I've ever heard. <laughs> oh, I love the theme. The theme? No, no, no. Theme, oh, fine. yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, there's a car chase that happens later oh, that yeah. has, like, real jaunty piano music <laughs> in it. <laughs> you know, it's just like the scene in Jaws where all of a sudden we cut to, like, Mutual of Omaha, and oh, this is what wildlife looks like. And they're out on their boats, and they're going shark hunting. Yeah. And it's like, yes. what is... Yes. I know exactly that. It's like, yeah. It's like, yeah. It's like Superman just saved a kid. Right. It's like, what is going on? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) Well, Mike is at the fortune tellers and the fortune teller produces a magical box and Mike sticks his hand in it and he learns that fear is the killer. So this seems very much right out of Dune. And then, curiously, after Mike leaves and g- leaves some money behind, the old lady starts giggling with Star Girl. <laughs> so, what it's a weird that's scene. <laughs> supposed to tell us? I'm not sure. It's I don't. The only takeaway I got from that was later on in the movie, Mike with the fear in the box. So at the very end, the last scene where he's in that white yeah. room, like putting his hand in the whatever. The he he reflects back onto the box thing, so it helps him with his fear. But he should have been afraid of that, right? But he also he should have. But then, as just as he was afraid of the box, but eventually, but he knows he can put his hand in there and be okay. So he was trying that. Like he oh. went back to that in his mind to kind of walk himself through being afraid of putting his hand through the unknown weird whatever wall it was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we also see the little girl go to the mausoleum yep. later and die. Nothing, yeah, yep. <laughs> I think she dies, right? Yep. I have no idea. So yeah. I don't know I'm if clear. they were. I don't know if they were in. There's also a ton of. This movie was almost three hours and they shot it. And so I'm wondering. And they they said they did a lot of backstory on the brothers' relationship. So I'm wondering if like the girl and the old woman, like Star Girl and the lady, the grandma, whatever, if they were, if there's other nuggets or connections that were made with her. You know, yeah. I don't know. We I wonder have. if that footage still exists. Like, I wonder if they'll ever put together a cut of, well, one of the, all of it. I don't know who it was. One of the talking heads. I don't know if it was the director or one of the other people working on the film. They said a lot of it's not very good. <laughs> so. Well, I think also a lot of it is lost. And then some <gasps> mm. of it they reused for the fourth one or something like that. Good. Wow. So we only got to watch a couple more to get to that footage. <laughs> <laughs> There's a line where um, Jody says, he follows me everywhere. It's like he knows I'm going to leave. Uh, yeah, he's like fucking 13 years old. He's like a uh, He looks human up being. to you. Yeah. 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 Like, like, this guy's an asshole. asshole. <laughs> and, he, yeah. and he hears Jody say that. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. The, the, the big brother is an asshole. Well, 
and he's and he's a shit actor. Yeah. <laughs> well, then right after the funeral, he like heads out to the bar, picks up a chick immediately. <laughs> immediately, not he's a like, word said. Yeah, he's like, grieving. <laughs> he's like, "Oh, my best friend Tommy just died. That was a funeral. Let's." Yeah. I'm gonna go Which, check out I, the same girl. Yep. When people are gonna want to like you know drink or whatever after a funeral, I can understand that. But then he's just like, "Hey, blonde at the end. Hey, come on." Yeah. I'm like, okay, that's how he's working through his grief, I suppose, but. So we're jumping over the awesome porch jam session oh, with I Reggie. Love that. Oh, they were, that was live. They recorded that. I say, that that shit was real. You could yeah. tell. <laughs> it's very weird. Yeah. <laughs> so now all of a sudden, I feel like I'm in Chooper, this other horror movie that just like has these scenes thrown in that don't really advance the plot. And uh, anyway, it was funny. It was like, like they wanted to show that they could do it. Yeah. But what, but what was weird to me, and maybe this was just me, but like I didn't immediately put together that they were friends. I thought it was just like, <laughs> oh, I'm just going to go try to jam. I'm going to jam with this guy. Is it because <laughs> Reggie looks like he's a right 45 years old? Reggie, <laughs> l- Reggie looks bad. <laughs> he looks bad. His pony, like he, he's holding on to that ponytail. Yeah. And he shouldn't well because no. Re- reggie was in an earlier scene reggie and jody were the two that were having the conversation outside right about tommy strinroll and right. how he, funerals creep jody says funerals creep it creep him out to him so like i what i appreciate about about the jam session scene was you could see okay these two are friends they hang out that's their relationship right you know? um yeah <laughs> i don't know if any so of weird. you saw it's very weird. the the footage of the ice cream fight in the ice cream parlor no. Oh, it's so goofy. Was it in this movie? In one of the. It, it was like an to be outtake. Anyway? Oh. Yeah, or something. Just I wanted more of the ice cream man. A I was... long deleted scene that huh. didn't like, make Why a does lot. he have to be an ice cream man? It is, that is an awesome truck, though. It's, it's, a, great, vibe. it's a great <laughs> truck. It gives you that creepy factor and it's, like. It's like I. It's like they had access to that truck and only that truck. <laughs> that's so they're so like, weird. well, I guess he has to be an ice cream man yeah. now or something. <laughs> I don't know. Just slap a big. Uh, sign on that building that says Reggie's ice cream. Yeah. Right. That's fine. <laughs> or maybe think of like uh, Mr. Mercedes, like there's the ice cream truck in that. Right. Although mm. I will say the reason I kind of wanted to watch the sequels is because I found out that the fifth one is about Reggie and he's like older, obviously, because I think it came out somewhat recently. It, uh, he's already older. <laughs> yes. <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> but he has dementia. And so it's like a similar like mm. reckoning with like mortality and like he can't tell what's real and what's not and have you seen it no but i watched a youtube video that was talking about like all of the lore and it honestly made me want to watch it ravager it came out in 2016 oh yeah, yeah he old wow yeah and it's um mike's in it mike is replaced in the second man one, but he's in all the other ones jody's in it sorry y'all spoilers who's in the old lady in lavender's in it interesting Anyway, I think I'm busy. (laughs) 2016, though, dang. Yeah. Um, Mike, this is a joke for only the listener because none of these three are going to understand this at all. But Mike launches off his bike exactly like Bella in Twilight New Moon, exactly like it. But there's no Jacob to pick pick him up. How did he do that though? That looked dangerous. I I couldn't like. fly off a bike like that and land on my face. <laughs> oh, I'm sure they had stunt doubles. I'm struggling to remember this scene at all. <laughs> oh, I don't remember it whatsoever. He's like riding his bike through the graveyard. Yeah. All of a sudden it just stops and, it, like, and he out. launches like oh, over okay. the handlebars. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The budget was $300,000. And apparently they just like shot this on weekends. I, so, mm-hmm. so something that I was watching this movie with a cold heart. I just kept being like, this is a piece of shit. This <laughs> sucks. Man, this looks like it was made by people that don't know what they're doing. And like, it had no budget. And that's exactly right. Mm-hmm. It was all like rented gear. They shot it on weekends when they could. It took them a long time to shoot it because it was a truly an amateur movie, which knowing that now, considering what the overall concept is, that's pretty cool. Yeah. It's cool that they actually successfully made it happen, even though it doesn't mm-hmm. make any sense and there's a yeah. lot of effects and stuff too <laughs> yes and some of them some of them look cool yeah, yeah. they really some. try so hey how about the mausoleum made out of plywood and wallpaper <laughs> very that, cool <laughs> that wow. made me laugh because that's such a trend right now is like marble contact paper mm. i was like wow humanity hasn't changed at <laughs> all <laughs> no <laughs> that's cool i wouldn't have even guessed that yeah yeah i thought it looked great i remember that set piece in particular looked really cool yeah mm-hmm. it's also very iconic like yeah 
it doesn't look like anything else before Mm-mm. or after. Yeah. No, it kind of has like the shining hallway effect where you like you know where you are, you know something crazy is going to happen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That silver ball is going to come out at you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and this is also where we see Reggie with the tuning fork thing. That's right. That was the one piece that we get out of the jam session. Yeah. Yes. Is Reggie What are you talking about? The song. You get the <laughs> Oh. <laughs> you get the whole thing. <laughs> That's God, he has some throwaway line when he's done with when he's done too, like a celebratory line that was really hilarious, and I don't remember exactly what it was now. Yeah, we needed more. We needed more Reggie. We needed more. I know the mo- the movie was about Jody and Michael and their relationship. We needed more Reggie. I guess we get him at the end, being all cute and dad like. But we needed. Not I just cute. wanted more banter. <laughs> we needed more banter. That's why you gotta watch the sequels. I, I wanted guess. more ponytail. It's all both of them. Well, you get oh, even yeah. less ponytail later on. He has like the, it's like steamy tiny at the very end of the movie. He's classing it up, you know. I guess a little, oh. little haircut. It's weird. Yeah, he got a he got a trim, but just on his ponytail. I did well, like. Where else is he gonna get a trim? That's fair. He does Yeah, that's fair. So after the cemetery, when Jody goes to have a had to go to that bar, it's called Dane's Cantina. I thought it was so cool on the outside. It looked all wooden and dive bar There's that giant horse thing oh, on the yeah. balcony. Yep. I did love it. I thought horse. it was so cool. Also, there's no cars around. He just pulls in and parks right out front every time. <laughs> yep. There's nobody around. Yeah. Right. And I'm like, where is that in relation to the cemetery? It has to be really close because he walks. they walk down there to make it. Right. Right. Well, but also there's a line from somebody earlier where they're like, Jody, what are you doing here? And he's like, oh, I'm like here for the kid or whatever. But like... It just gives me the impression that there's nothing to do, no one around, like right. Well, and then there's that line in front of their house where he says something like, "This this town's going to drive you nuts" or whatever, and that there's there's a lot of disparaging this little town in this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, you never really see much of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you see the graveyard. <laughs> see, or like, maybe what we else do. do you see? There's like that's four <laughs> places in this movie: the bar, the graveyard, mausoleum, their house. And Reggie's. And the mine shaft. <laughs> oh, my God. It really is like a bad D&D adventure. <laughs> yeah, there's not a lot of... But I guess if you, again, low budget, you're not going to want to set up a lot of scenes. Yep. Low budget and so, probably not a lot of access to places no. where they really could shoot. A lot of outdoor scenes. Yes, a lot of outdoor scenes. And the one time that you see extras, they probably didn't know they were in something because they're all blurry. <laughs> <laughs> but... Well, back to uh, Amanda's point about Jody going to the bar and picking up a woman, the the lady. Um, they make their way out back out to the cemetery. This seems like a curious mo for the tall man. I always got to do it at the cemetery. But gotta be close to home. That's right. <laughs> And she's then topless, and doesn't Mike say "Wow" at this point? <laughs> yes. They both do. Like the Jody oh. says "Wow," and then Mike's in the bush and, is, and says "Wow," like back to back. It was so cute. I love that part. <laughs> yeah. It was just so silly. It was like silly for and, all the eleven-year-old boys yeah. watching. This movie. Well, <laughs> and the twenty-something Jody says it too. It's like "Wow." Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's emotionally eleven. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, he's forty, going on eleven. So Mike hears something scary and something starts running after him. Mike then breaks up the tryst with Jody and the lady and (laughs) everyone starts running at this point. Jody's got her underwear in his mouth uh, and he curiously leaves them there for a lot of the run. Yes. He's not that bright, I'm, I'm <laughs> starting to think. So the scene ends with the the scene that I started this whole podcast out with. Mike is, well, Jody and Mike have a little argument. Mike goes back home. We see Mike in bed. And then Mike has this nightmare of the tall man and the arms coming out from under the bed to grab him. Oh, this is the scene that was in the trailer that you saw? That's mm. right. Ah, uh, okay. I do think it's menacing. I mean, there's the tall man, like, standing over the head of the bed with both hands on the, the edge of the bed and those arms coming out. Mm-hmm. That's, the little that's, sh- 
Jean Cocteau yeah. arms. <laughs> I wish we had. I wish we had more money so we could have gotten a couple more uh, views of that. Like an overhead shot would have been awesome. I agree. The, the, definitely, that was the first really cool looking thing I think in the in the movie. Yeah. Um, and I I've seen that image before. It's I think it's a pretty iconic right. image with horror people. Well, let let me go back. I think another really cool shot is just the funeral home. Uh, so that's in the very beginning. I mean, that is an awesome mansion. And after I read the other movie that it was in, it's actually been in a lot of movies. Like oh. what? Well, the key movie that I remember it from is A View to a Kill, James Bond. Oh. It is? Yes. Remember, he goes to... Uh, have lunch or brunch or whatever with that woman in that giant mansion. Oh. And there's a shootout, I think, or a stabbing. I can't remember. It's been a while. Huh. And so that mansion is... It's the is, same one. It's the same one. It's Dunsmuir. The house and Gardens in Oakland, California. Right. It's also the mansion from So I Married an Axe Murderer. Oh. oh, I didn't know that. I didn't see that in the list. God, I've seen that movie a million times. Yeah. I used to Jordan play loves it. I own that movie. <laughs> I used to love it. And Comedy Central did the like thing they did with Office Space where they showed it every day oh, for no. <laughs> like 10 years. So I've seen it too many times. But, huh. That's cool, though. Yeah. So there, I mean, there are a few really cool shots in this. Um, I, I love two different lines in this little scene. One, the lady in Lavender says, so what's the only thing to do in this town? <laughs> As she's dragging him to the graveyard, which I just think is just very like funny. Just like weirdly moving his hand on different parts of her back. <laughs> 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 and the other line I really loved was, what the heck? Wait here, it's my little brother. I think he has some kind of problem. Yes, <laughs> like, some kind yeah. of problem. <laughs> he also, but so the little brother goes screaming past, him, <laughs> yeah. and he doesn't immediately look. He looks eventually, and then goes, "Oh, I think it's my little brother." <laughs> <laughs> I think he has a problem, some kind of problem. <laughs> um, the scene, though, the dream sequence that. Mike has was the first thing that made me start liking this movie a little bit better because this has um, like watching the beyond helped and hurt this movie for me because I do like the weird dream logic um, but Mike has a nightmare and then later Jody also has a nightmare and there's all these little like um, echoes of things happening throughout the movie or like they're not foils exactly, but um, similar things happen to the two brothers over and over. Like some, it reminds me of like when your brain has like three things it's trying to remember and then it just like remixes in your brain as a dream that night. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yep. I just really like that and thought yeah. it was cool. We come next to possibly my favorite scene in the whole movie. I love this. So Mike is downtown and he looks up, there's Reggie and his mm -hmm. van. Reggie's unloading ice cream and there's, there's cold air pouring out of the ice cream truck. And who comes walking up? It's the tall man mm -hmm. who has such a great walk. I mean, I think it's, this is the best walk since little Reagan came down the stairs in The Exorcist. <laughs> oh. You know, and then he looks, he turns his head and looks right over at Mike mm -hmm. and he breathes in the ice cream air and he has this strange little pose with his hands. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember that at all. Yeah. They're, they're, they're so oddly placed, like he's breathing in something delicious. I don't know. Ice, <laughs> ice cream. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Mm. That's all it means. Just, we've learned he loves ice he cream. Likes, he's got a real sweet tooth. <laughs> he likes cold things. Cold. Right. Like the morgue. That's right. right. That is a really cool scene and you do get that like ominous effect. And you can see why Mike at 13 would look over and see that and lock eyes with this, this tall dude and be like, oh my God. Like, yeah. It's spooky. I can see why it would be spooky, but it was a really cool shot. Yeah. It's also one of those things where, like, if Mike explained it in real life, or even, frankly, explaining it as part of the movie, all that happens is this guy's walking down the street, he looks at Mike, 
and then he leaves. But <laughs> the quality of motion and like the way that he looks at him tells us something else. Right. Mm-hmm. But that's not something you could ever really communicate to somebody else for them to understand the same like sense of urgency and danger. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. So Don Coscarelli says that the tall man is really kind of the embodiment of death and you can't escape him, Mm -hmm. which is uh, kind of interesting. Personally, I don't really believe the director because (laughs) I don't, despite what he says, I don't think he represents death. I mean, I I think it's a, a, a bad fit once you get to the end of the movie and you get to another planet and <laughs> i mean yes. but he still comes back like he's they bury him he's surrounded by boulders yeah i and then he's he in might the kids be room. magical but there you know i i just don't really imagine death as kind of this gender shifting uh person who has suits that are too small and I, you know, <laughs> right. it just doesn't really fit for me. And shrinks people down to be slaves on his red planet. <laughs> right. It's like that's all way too specific. Yeah. yeah. Like, that part doesn't really track. Specific while also not <laughs> fucking saying a word about what it is. <laughs> right. Like, I think any of the traditional slasher heroes m- better embody death than this guy. Oh, I I liked it actually. Yeah, because he's like this like this like presence you can never escape. You know what I mean? Right. He's always there. Nobody yeah. else like can see it. Yeah. yeah, and I just feel like um, so much of Mike's arc is about um, not wanting his brother to leave, and after like his parents have already died, and I don't know. I just thought that was interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean it. It is an interesting take on it. You know, mm-hmm. I do think that <laughs> I don't know. I feel like this movie alone is different from this movie with all the sequels. You know what I mean? Yep, exactly. Which is exactly how I'm going to remember it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a huge sequels person in general. Like, yeah. I don't really want to watch 15 Nightmare on Elm Street. Or it depends. You know, it's like. Some sequels are successful. I can't imagine seeing a sequel to this though that would be like, oh fuck yeah, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But I have a soft spot for like some of those Friday the Thirteenth sequels and some of the Nightmare on Elm Street sequels. Oh, yeah. Some, some, yeah. some. I'm huge asterisks there. And same thing with Halloween. But more often than not, they're stories that don't need to be told. But these, but that they just want to make money. I don't know if they made more money in the long run on some of these other phantasm movies i know that this one did really well i think the answer is no i think by the time you get to the fifth one it's like a made for tv budget or well, less <laughs> two of them were direct to video yeah so oh <laughs> <laughs> well uh we see mike he's under the barracuda in the garage fixing up the car and <laughs> something has come into the garage and we hear shuk, 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 again. <laughs> Which is a noise that I make to my dogs. <laughs> <laughs> shuk, shuk, shuk. <laughs> they love it. <laughs> yeah, I just, I felt such bad things headed Mike's way. He's just under a giant car. I'm like, oh no. Yeah. He's going to get trapped. I'm also, scared for him. Also, what the hell is he even doing down there? He's, he's, re- just, he's fixing the car. He's ratcheting something. <laughs> He was. They were working on the car earlier in the movie too. Right. He's. He said he had some little line of dialogue where he's just like, "It's the blah," and then he gets under the car and starts ratcheting, and that's yeah, when yeah. he overhears his brother talking shit. And then yeah. he goes back and he does it again later in the garage. At that point. Yeah. So if you were under a car and it started shaking like that, would you hunker down no. in the middle of no. it? No. I'm gonna wait this out and see how it plays out. Yeah. What the hell? I'm gonna right. assume the car is going to land on top of me and smush me to a pancake. Right. But that's such little kid logic. Mm-hmm. Oh, there's something spooky in your room. I'm gonna go under the covers. Oh, if man. I close my eyes, they'll they'll not be here anymore. Oh. I'm gonna go under the barracuda. I'm gonna I'm gonna go hide in the closet, <laughs> <laughs> a place right. with no he other have, right. exit. <laughs> he doesn't have his gun yet, so he's got to just hide. Oh yeah, right. he doesn't have the knife in his sock either. Oh my god! <laughs> right. 
And then the scene where his brother Jody comes in and <laughs> Mike hits him with a hammer on his foot. It's it's a funny scene if you watch it a few times. <laughs> it is. The editing. There's like this odd delay or something <laughs> where Jody yells, Ah! <laughs> it's right. just a, yes. a close-up of his face. <laughs> God, this fucking movie. <laughs> it just—it's like they filmed an entire movie, took out like, just pulled a couple scenes out here and there. Just pull, hey, let's pull this one out. Let's pull. Then they put it back together to make a movie. And so those other like you know eight scenes that they pulled out are just over there, and that would help make it a more complete movie. Yes. Right. <laughs> but I feel, man, I feel like if this movie were, because it, it's an hour and a half, if it were double the length, it would be no intolerable. Well, it was three hours. <laughs> I mean, but also there's. I mean, part of it, not, dare I say, charm, but part of, like, the charm of it is, like, these disjointed scenes of weirdness happening. You get the sense of, like, suspense and the unknown. There's death. Oh, my God, the boy, him and his brother. Like, you are pulled in many directions, but it's it's not going to make, it doesn't, it's just not going to come together complete. It just doesn't need to. That's part of the charm of watching it. Like, is because I was watching it and disliking it. So I'm like, oh, that's a cool music. That's a cool sound effect. Oh, the shoes. Oh, the guy, the ice cream man. Like, there were little pieces that I just kept liking that kept me going. So if it was two hours, I would have been like so done with it earlier. So I, I was okay with it having all these holes. I yeah, and I and a lot of the um, one of my first searches after this was why do people like this movie? And mm-hmm. I don't mean that necessarily in a disparaging way, but like. What's the deal? Like, what is the thing about this people love? And there were a lot of lengthy reviews and articles talking about how they're like, oh, part of what makes this movie like have its charm and what works is that it's disjointed. It doesn't make any fucking sense. Mm-hmm. I don't accept that. Mm-hmm. That's like seeing a movie that doesn't make any fucking sense to be like, oh, I get it. I you do know, that to be... like every David Lynch thing I see, though. But he's fucking with you. <laughs> this guy, I think, was trying to make... A super fantastical, like, woo-woo bullshit movie. (laughs) Like, I mean, really, kind of unlike anything that was coming out in America at that point. Like, this is more like the stuff that was coming out in Italy. Didn't didn't the director say he had a dream? Mm -hmm. Yes. Like, ten years ago or something? Yeah, and that kind of came. Yeah. I I do think this movie does, like, the skin rink thing where, like, it puts you in Mike's shoes and I think the one thing it does really well is like especially if you had seen it as a child I think it like is good at giving you the feeling of like being 11 or whatever and you don't know what's going on and you like can't quite figure out like how this all works and you can't quite figure out this death thing and your brother's not helping you at all and you have nobody to turn to and like you're just like trapped in this experience that you can't that you don't really have control over so I think from that perspective, it works, which was also, I think, what the appeal of Skin and Marink is. Personally, I didn't like any of it, but, um, yeah. I haven't seen it. You don't need to. I, I haven't heard anything good about it. It's, it, no, it's, t- uh, it's one of those things where, like, if you have an insane amount of patience and a lot of free time and you can totally immerse yourself in it, it might work because it is all about like a liminal space and like feeling trapped in a th- in a unknowable thing mm-hmm. under the control of something that you have no chance against but for someone who doesn't have a lot of free time and doesn't have a lot of patience <laughs> it is like an hour and a half of straight up looking at a black wall and trying to see if maybe you can figure out there's something in the background is there something in the background mm-hmm. i'm not sure so uh, I personally wouldn't recommend it, but it did give me a similar vibe to this where it's hmm. like, this is really like the perspective of a child, like unable to cope with or understand the world mm-hmm. that they are in. Yeah. And I think the movie does a good job of making us feel that way. Mm-hmm. And because we do recognize that it's a story about Mike. It's Mike's, you know, he has a lot going on. And even at and the end, is- it's like this ending comes out of nowhere and you're like, oh shit he yeah. just like can't deal okay hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that's about how i felt at the end okay yeah <laughs> one thing i'll say too when i was watching it it wasn't particularly like joyful or a good experience watching it but i was not really bored mm-hmm. if it's, i wasn't really bored because i just wanted to know where it was going and what weird thing was going to happen next like literally what 
where are we going next? That's a good How point. will it connect? And which is a kind of an odd way to experience a movie. Like this, you'd think, oh, it's so boring and dumb. But it, it kind of kept me wondering and waiting. Okay, where are we going next? What's What does that mean? Mm-hmm. Kind of waiting for the pieces to fall. I, 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 I agree with that. I can remember a point in... Um, in Mike's bedroom, where I was like, I don't like this movie, and I don't. And I, what I mean, what I mean by that is, it doesn't have an atmosphere that I like. It doesn't. Um, if I'm just being perfectly honest, the atmosphere that appeals to me the most is Halloween and the fog, yeah. stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Has its own atmosphere. Has a pretty coherent storyline. Um, this movie has a there's this intangible thing about it that I was like I don't really like what it's trying to do, but I was desperately curious what it, what the hell is the explanation of this tall guy? Uh-huh. Um, why does he have yellow blood? What's that? Um, <laughs> why did a bug come out of him? <laughs> um, it kept me curious. Like I wanted to know, like where yeah. is, where does that silver ball come from? How do they make five yeah. of these? And, like yeah. <laughs> and right. all your questions were answered by the end. <laughs> I do think that there's something to say about that though. Like a movie that doesn't play all of its cards and yeah. you never yep. know the full answer or reason. Mm-hmm. Like I think that's interesting. The thing is, in later phantasm movies, we do get the origin of the of the sphere. I think it's called yeah. a sentinel sphere. And it's like that's worse yeah. <laughs> than just leaving it open ended. It's like there's a creepy ball that flies around and drills holes in people's heads and sprays blood everywhere. That was awesome. That it's should like be enough. That it, and I think that was enough. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? But they gave it the lost treatment where by the end you're like, or the Star I don't Wars really treatment. care about where the polar bear came from at this point. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Because we saw so many other things after we initially saw that lost. sphere. <laughs> You have a million more questions. Exactly. Like that room with all those canisters and then the dwarves and then Tommy the was a dwarf. <laughs> and then Tommy yeah. was a dwarf. It's like, I want to know, like, how do they become a dwarf? I want to know what they look like under the robe. Yeah. yeah. All they showed us was the face. <laughs> I wanted to peek in those barrels because Reggie gets right in there yeah. and looks, or maybe it was Jody. And it's like, show me. You yeah. got to show me. Well, it was Reggie that got up close to it. But oh, we were Reg- we were one or two because you can, I don't know, you can hear little noises. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they're not in like a barrel of fluid. Barrel of fun. It's a barrel of monkeys. My, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, at some point later, when we do see Reggie again, like, oh, he didn't die. For part of me, <laughs> right. part of me was like, wait, is it that really him, or is he an entity that's not quite a dwarf yet? Mm-hmm. I would right. like, should Mike trust him? I don't know. Or does the tall man have another form or uh-huh. something? Yeah, yeah. You know, because they they don't tell you anything about all of that, which is a strength. Yeah, it is because I was still wondering. I'm like, oh wait, it was suspenseful. I'm like, is mm-hmm. that Reggie or is it not Reggie? Yeah. I, I still, yeah. Well, after the garage scene, um, Mike tries to tell Jody what's going on. Of course, Jody doesn't believe him, and Mike decides to set off on his own. So he goes to the funeral home. He kicks in a window, makes a lot of noise. Yes. <laughs> oh yes. my god! It's like nice sleuthing. Yes. And he's crawling around everywhere. He decides to hide in a coffin when the tall man is coming. The tall man and his little buddy. Yeah. Who's his friend? Who seems to just be his human buddy? Neil Young, the caretaker. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so that's when we, and there is a great shot here. Because Mike is looking in one direction, and we see Mike's face, and he's slightly off center in the in the frame of the video, and coming from behind him, way down the hall, is the tall man, mm-hmm. and Mike turns around and says, "Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, <laughs> yes, that, that, yes," which is exactly what I would say. It's the right yeah. thing to say. <laughs> That's what a lot of people would say. I forgot about that. I, I did really like that. He also chomps down on that guy's arm, yeah. and way too much blood comes I out. I know. That. So he was just chewing on it. There's just pieces flying. I know. 
I really, really like that a lot. <laughs> and so the ball comes out. It's a great scene and uh, drills into the caretaker's head. Blood is spraying everywhere. The caretaker falls. It looks like he pees himself. He, he, yeah, does. he does. It was apparently this movie was supposed to be rated X because of that. Because he peed. Yeah. Because it. Yeah. Wow, I didn't know that. It wasn't the gallon of blood that shot out of his head a second ago. Well, well, the that it, those two things, but apparently the like the, the peeing was like specifically cited as a reason. I don't know. You know why what? You didn't even wow. need that in the movie. At first, I was like, I'm like, did the blood turn yellow? Now it's turning clear. Or is that pee? I know. I thought at first, oh, maybe he has like weird mystical fluid in him or something because yeah. he's, yeah. he's not a real he's not a human <laughs> yellow know? blood light yeah. but he's just yeah right but he's just he's just no he just peed yeah. I like the yellow I, I call it the mac and cheese blood it looked like mac and cheese yeah. Yeah. what kind of mac and cheese are you making I, vegan mac and cheese <laughs> speaking of vegans Don Coscarelli's daughter is a famous vegan who has several books here at the Ann Arbor District Library oh, she? really yeah Oh. I don't remember her first name, but her last <gasps> name was exciting. Cascarelli. Yeah. Wow. That's so weird. That's so weird. How'd yeah. you find that out? I'm looking her up. <laughs> oh, I, I just, I watched Chloe a K. lot of... Chloe K. Coscarelli. Yes. Chef Chloe? Do you know her? Famous, yes. Famous <laughs> vegan. <laughs> hey, what? we might have just raised the movie up a point. <laughs> <laughs> Chloe's Kitchen. Chloe's Vegan Desserts. Oh, wait. We have one of these. You guys know, house. you guys know Chloe. <laughs> That is that's wild. Her son, that's her his daughter. Yeah. Is there a mac and cheese recipe? In yeah, her chefchloe.com. Book? Oh, she's a baker. What if? <laughs> what if all the recipes were were themed after phantasm? Tall man, fingers. Tall awesome. man fingers. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> tall man fingers and like strange morphing garbage disposal bug. Huh. That's yeah. so neat. We have one of these. So <laughs> I've got one other really interesting tie in here. Supposedly, J.J. Abrams is a fan of Phantasm. And he was so taken with the the ball that he made Captain Phasma in tribute or uh, was inspired by it for his that character. I believe that Bad Robot also like... Financed the, remaster. the remastered version of it, yeah. Because yeah. when I when I, the the copy I watched started with a bad robot title, and I yep. thought that I accidentally put on one of the sequels at first. <laughs> but right. yeah, funny. Did you guys all watch the remaster? I think so, because I think that one. Tech, the I'm pointing at the DVD on the table for our listeners. That's what I, I think that the Anchor Bay <laughs> one is also the remastered one. I think. So Chef Chloe, she was on Food Network's Cupcake Wars. Well, Christopher, I'm so thankful that you brought up that fun fact because, of course, I've heard of that person. Fantastic. <laughs> I thought you were just making shit up at first. Are you serious? Yes. <laughs> You're like, speaking of vegans. <laughs> I, thought, that was, I thought that was a joke. <laughs> that was a little segue we cooked up last that was a night funny in our pre planning special. <laughs> it's funny. In, the, in a different world, I was going to make something out of her cookbook for this episode oh. but oh and you well. could have made like the spooky fingers you That's guys right. you know how during oh. like a spooky season they make like the little, yeah. little looks like little fingers put a little like mac and cheese blood on it yeah nacho cheese yeah nacho cheese dip yeah dip <laughs> little breads <gasps> <gasps> little breads with like nacho cheese dear <laughs> chef chloe if you're listening um we love your dad's movie big fan and that would be a really cool thing to put on your blog pretty soon <laughs> <laughs> Even I guess when this airs, it'll be after Halloween. Ooh, Anyways, fruit we're punch in. dispenser through the head with the <laughs> little sphere. <laughs> a theme. On. This is a great little theme. I would, I would I would attend that party. So Mike is chased by the tall man, and he manages to shut the door and get away. But he realizes that the tall man's fingers are sticking out of the door. So there's a great sound effect here when he slices his fingers off. It's like some kind of weird buzzardy gurgling. I don't even know how to describe it. Yeah, I noted that too. I yeah. Cool. yeah, it was great. And then there's all that yellow goo that sprays everywhere and the two fingers are still moving. Yeah. It's a good effect. Yeah. yeah. So what would you do in that situation? You'd pick one up. Box one up. <laughs> yep. Take it home. Take, it home. <laughs> Take that cupcake on home That's right. to go. And show it to your older brother. <laughs> and then fall asleep on the stairs with a fucking gun. Oh, I felt so sad for him yeah. at that point. I felt <clears throat> sad for him. But he shows it to Jody, 
And Jody's reaction is, okay, I believe you. Right. There sure is something weird going on. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> Some, no. <laughs> some, and he's so tired. He's like, oh boy, there sure is something weird going on. <laughs> like such a shitty actor. Yeah. I, just the worst. But there was no, no question. There was no argument. Because he'd been trying to tell his brother all along, and he didn't believe him. Right. But. And then, uh, at some point, oh, they want to go take the finger to the sheriff. And... Mike runs upstairs to check the box and instead of the box just being empty, the box has the finger has changed into a crazy looking fly. Oh fly bug thing. Yeah. And we've got that scene with the fly creeping through Mike's hair. So Jody finally believes Mike. And this is a scene where they're they're both gearing up. And loading a lot of weapons, and we get some great gun advice from Jody. Um, Jody decides to go break into the funeral home, leaving Mike at home. I, how many times does Mike get left behind? Bad idea. A, a bunch. A lot of times. A it's bunch. weird. Why does he? Why is he afraid his brother's gonna leave? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like he has. He's. He has to be sitting at home thinking, okay, Jody's walking to his death now. Mm-hmm. Right. Leaving Mike alone. It's funny, though, because these two dumb motherfuckers, like, he goes alone as a 13-year-old kid yep. to, like, solve it or whatever. And then Jody does the same thing later in the movie. It's mm-hmm. like they're little... Yeah, then at they the end, too, they separate again. They can't leave the funeral home alone. <laughs> No. Really. It's not, it's not, it's it's not a buddy movie. <laughs> it's not a buddy movie. No. It's a solo adventure. Hope we don't die. That's exactly. <laughs> so Jody breaks into the funeral home. He goes through the broken window. How far does he get? He doesn't not get very. right. Mm-mm. He goes into that basement room. A Jawa attacks him. <laughs> he, he shoots. Shakes, it. Yeah. He, <laughs> hey, <laughs> if you're gonna point a gun at somebody, you shoot to kill. I guess, but he didn't <laughs> even have a little bit of curiosity about what it looked like. He yeah. just shot it. Yeah. And also, it was like literally so close to his own head, and he's like turning his gun upside he down. He almost yeah. shot himself in the fucking <laughs> head. Yeah. Are you that good of a shot, Jody? Like oh. he's just like you're lucky. <laughs> you shoot to kill behind your head and. Over your shoulder. I would. Plus, he didn't know what he doesn't know anything about these things. He was not chased by one in the woods like Mike was. He might have killed a kid for. It could have been like a three foot tall, like a small child, or something underneath that cloak. (laughs) You know, a Jawa Jawa. dressed up for how (laughs) doesn't matter. Instead of instead of like picking up and like throwing it to the ground and sitting on it and uncloaking his mask, which is what they should have done, then he could have shot it. But instead, he like holds it over his shoulder like a bag of potatoes and just like shoots it, (laughs) nearly missing his own head. It's the dumbest scene. It's a good scene. <laughs> it's so <a> dumb scene. <laughs> I also love that the Jawa jumps on him. Like, yep. stays yeah, up yeah. on him and then just... Yeah. I think those things are little fierce little things. Sugar, sugar, sugar. Yeah. Sugar, 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 sugar. I would like to know, do you get to choose if you become a Jawa or a sphere orb? So aren't I, they both... Well, are they, aren't they souls? all being turned... <laughs> this is so stupid. Aren't they all... <laughs> they're all being turned into those little dwarves, right? Like, that's what they say. Because yeah. the, the sphere thing, they don't explain it at yeah. all. Don't it's think like about a, it. Which is good. Don't explain it. doesn't matter. It's a reverse Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. <laughs> <laughs> well, but then there, there's like some... <sighs> They're going back to Oompa This Loompa is where Loompa. this movie loses me. The, like, the, <laughs> there's like some line of dialogue about like... They're shrinking them down because of the gravity on the planet yeah. or something oh, like that. Yeah. What the fuck Mike, does that even mean? Yeah. Mike figured it all out after he visits the red planet. He ducks in. Right. He has a vision. Oh my, that was way too easy. And somebody's like, they made us small for this! <laughs> <laughs> and, and they're like, yeah, that's exactly it. Right. Oh, yeah. Holding him by his suspenders. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the dwarves and the tubs are ready to go. So, we're not quite... <laughs> Sorry, we jumped away. Yeah, that's all right. This movie's too good. We can't <laughs> help ourselves. So, I will say, even my timeline breaks down here a little bit. Jody escapes barely out of the basement window, is running off. A car starts in the distance. We know who that is. I think simultaneously, doesn't Mike MacGyver his way out of the bedroom? 
Yes. Oh, yeah. With the <laughs> right. So not Mike, yet. Not yet. Oh no, okay, that is later. That's, right. see, we have to get the ice cream truck. Right. See, that is a that. totally the car chase. different being left behind scene. Yes, that's the other time that he decided. But that time he locked him in. Exactly. With the with the. He Screw. MacGyvered the door shut right. before he MacGyvers the door open. We also yeah. miss, so after Mike open, shows Jody the box and Jody opens the box, that's when Mike goes up to his room and the giant fly. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. So Mike, th- is that when Mike was left alone? He's battling the fly and Jody comes home and helps him kill the fly? Or does Reggie come in? No, that's when Reggie that's when comes Reggie in. Comes in. Mm-hmm. So anyway, Jody breaks out of the funeral home. A car is chasing him. And Jody open fires on the car, realizes that no one's there. And the next car that pulls up, Mike's in the car. Hell yeah. In the Barracuda. And they have a little car chase. Got to get a little Dukes of Hazard action in there. And Jody says, let that car ride up right on our ass so I can blast it. The next time you guys watch this movie, pay attention to the music that's happening in this car chase. Okay. And tell me that you feel any tension at all. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I also love um, when Jody gets in the car, he's like, nobody was driving that car. Let's follow it or some shit. And then... 20 seconds later, Mike's like, there was nobody driving the car. Right. Yeah, no we No shit, know. idiot. <laughs> right. I thought it was a Jawa because they're so small you can't see him. <laughs> you can't see over the dash. That's- well, yeah, he's eventually, that's the reveal. Because that's Tommy. Right. That's the reveal. It is it's Tommy. The, it's like impaled by the okay. whatever. God. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was gross. Yeah. Reggie it was says, cool as hell. <laughs> Reggie says, what's all this yellow shit? Yeah, that's my thoughts exactly. What is this? I've se- Okay, so uh, somewhere somebody decided that this was embalming fluid. Hmm. Mm. Right. That's, that's what I said. But that wouldn't make sense for the tall guy, would it? Or maybe not. Are you trying to make sense of this movie right now? <laughs> He's a tall dwarf. <laughs> Are you making the mistake that I did yesterday? (laughs) If you watch all of them, (laughs) you get a, 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 there is a whole long story. About the blood? No. Damn it. But, but I don't think it would be embalming fluid. I mean, of course, any and no explanation fits with all these facts. Right. It doesn't matter. Right. But it is funny. (laughs) Yeah. Right. And. Also, I feel like a lot of it, like, doesn't, like, I guess in the later movies you find out that he's from a planet that is hot and he loves the hot and he hates the cold. It's like, okay, but why was he, like, sniffing the ice cream air? Yeah. Then? Sweet right. tooth. <laughs> <laughs> he loves sugary treats. So, car crash, we, I think that's when we get that's when we get Jody's dream. After but then the, they're going to put the dwarf inside the ice cream truck. Yep. And worry about, so Reggie gets worried mm-hmm. that... Um, this guy's not going to leak all over my ice cream, is he? <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> he will. <laughs> uh, and then I think the last time we see Jody leaves again? I He leaves again because... He takes Michael goes to the antique oh. store. He, he he's going to drop him off. He's like he say, he just sends him strangely to the antique store. Yeah, Susan and Sally will take care the of him. The other place they had permission to film. <laughs> <laughs> he goes there to sleep while his brother's off fighting the Jawas. Right. So this is the scene that reminded me so much of Stephen King and it, right? Hmm. Because he's looking at that old photo, and oh. the photo comes alive. Right, 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 right. That seemed like it was right out of it. There was, you know, yeah, the, the, the movie. book. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, to, what another, this was the line that Matt referenced earlier, but when they're in the kitchen deciding their plan, okay, I see it all now. What we got to do, we got to snag that tall dude and stomp the shit out of him, and we'll find out what the <laughs> hell is going on up there. <laughs> so good. Why, they're taking these bodies and crushing them down to half size. Crushing them. <laughs> <laughs> he also, he, sorry, I just remembered a very funny thing that snag uh, the that older tall brother, dude. The older brother says, he couldn't have been more than three feet long. <laughs> (laughs) (laughs) 
So what we're all alluding to is the very end of the movie, which I think we're coming right up on. Oh, can we talk about Mike? We mentioned this, but not fully, about how Mike makes that door open with the bullet and the hammer. Oh, yeah. Uh, There's his MacGyver moment. on that, and I want to see if that would work, because I think that all it would have done was blow his hand off. I feel yeah. like kids would have been trying that at home, though. Sure. We could try it yeah. here. So he gets a, he empties his gun, he gets the bullets out, and then he <laughs> tapes he scotch tapes the bullet to the hammer, and then he hammers his door open and puts his hole puts his hand through the hole. It only made a hole. Makes uh, why didn't he just like hammer a hole in the door without putting the bullet? Yeah. That, Anyways, those doors cool. are not very substantial. It was fun. It was such a little boy adventure thing to do. Yes. Like, you know, yeah. I'm going to play with these bullets and this scotch tape and I'm going to get out of here. <laughs> Just like my childhood. <laughs> so earlier when you were all talking about Mike and, you know, riding the motorcycle and things like that, you know, and the era that this was filmed, if you squint a little while you're watching this, can't you kind of see that Stephen King, Boys on Bikes, adventure kind of like the parents are gone like steven spielberg mm -hmm. you know yeah. yeah or or even like you know goonies a little bit i mean there's a real kind of boy adventure it's there but it doesn't have nearly as much life as mm -hmm. all those other things do it right. doesn't feel and and part of this is i think the kid the little kid is good uh -huh. for the most part i think he's i think he's good the brother it's like i don't know if his intention as an actor was to be entirely in like soap operas or something and just be one note always but he sticks out as just bad to me he yeah. he kind of ruins a bunch of scenes for me <laughs> <laughs> they're real flat yeah he's so so flat and at one point um okay so we're almost at this the barrels yeah, scene. yeah. when they open that door and it's a reveal to all of us yep. which is not much of a reveal but the reggie and the kid are selling it they are both looking at it like what the fuck am i looking at and that and again when you watch this again go back and look at his face because i couldn't stop looking at his nothing reactions to anything i i sorry i was really bothered <laughs> by this brother to the point that it's like i don't think this is a good movie no right. he's nothing he's like he's not even cardboard he's yeah. just trying but not yeah. Um, but Christopher, so the movies that you mentioned a moment ago, those are the kinds of movies I love. Like that is my genre, my little boy adventure stories. Yep. Absolutely. I did not think about that at all in while I was watching this movie, other than the Bad News Bears kind of reference um, of when I first saw Mike riding his little motorbike through the, the graveyard. Um, but since you said it, I do see the tiny elements of it, but it does not fall in that genre for me. It's like the, it's like, <laughs> it's I'm like, joking. it's like the boy, it, it's like what we're missing is the boy going to hang out with his friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. figure this out with his friends. Instead, he has his piece of shit brother and the ice cream man. With the ice cream, cream man. This is his, his two his, friend. Yes. Well, then, I guess his two friends are the, the girls that are in the antique store the that babes. Yeah. he ends up in the car with. Like, he's driving the babes. Like, why why are they going with him? He's the like, I got babes. this magic photo of this uh, tall man. Let's go, let's go find it. How would they? I don't know. <laughs> It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. But yeah, this of course it's like an antique store. That's his like where he's supposed to stay and hide out. For for some reason. Well his brother fights bad guys. And she just takes him at his word, like, all right, I guess I'll take you over there. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> the ice cream truck driving into the darkness is a really good shot. I thought it was cool. And it also reminded me of Nightmare on Elm Street. Um and so does the very last scene. Mm. Yeah. I can see that. Jody's a really good shot because he also shoots at the silver ball and it explodes. Damn. That's right. Yeah, he, yeah. he got the jaw earlier. A shotgun. <laughs> mm -hmm. right. Deafening both of them. <laughs> 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 well, Mike and Jody are finally into the funeral home, and who shows up? It's the ice cream man, Reggie. He's there. He escaped uh, somehow this car crash with a body in the back. And the three of them open the mystical door inside the funeral home. And as they open the door, it's so bright and it's full of little black barrels that are all three feet tall. What's in the barrels? The only other thing in the room is a 
strange-looking stanchion. Uh, it's two kind of uh, two kind of poles sticking <laughs> up off out of the floor, kind of like a security detector in a record store. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they're humming and vibrating. So Mike thinks back to his experience with Stargirl and thinks, let me stick my hand through that because fear is the killer and I won't be afraid. He sticks his hand through, it vanishes, but he pulls it back and it's fine. And then he kind of gets sucked in Mm -hmm. to this other dimension and sees this red planet where there are a bunch of barrels on the planet. This is actually a really cool shot. It's super trippy. Mm -hmm. And he sees all these barrels on a planet, and he sees all these little Jawa creatures hunched around, and he's pulled back to our dimension by... It's Jody, right? It's not Reggie. It's both of them, and they're both holding his belt and pulling his butt through the (laughs) threshold. (laughs) So they pull Mike back, and Mike says immediately... They're shrinking them down because the gravity on the planet is so strong, which doesn't make a lot of sense. (laughs) And now we've just introduced a new dimension, these slave Jawas, and things go out of control pretty quickly. The movie ends with Reggie kind of stilling the two tongs as if they were the tongs of a tuning fork he holds on to them and doesn't everything go dark and they're suddenly outside in a giant windstorm and they're all separated yeah and of course we get one last shot at the lady in lavender and she stabs reggie seemingly to his death and mike and jody trudge off I think that's the second to the last scene, right? Mm -hmm. That's the end. Yeah. It is. Except we get one little last snipe out of Jody saying, oh, Reggie's dead, leave him, or something like that. Right. Which, in fact, he's not dead. He's not dead, and I thought he was your friend. Right. (laughs) Yes. This guy sucks. Yeah, so so much happened at the end. It was very, like, rapid fire. There's also the whole thing where... Like they had to trap the tall man in the mine shaft, and then, <laughs> then oh, before right. Jody dies, he's biking around and he leads him over to the mine shaft, and then the rocks all fall. He's like, "I'm gonna go to the, yeah. the quarry or the whatever, and the rocks are gonna fall." We're gonna trap him, and that all perfectly happens, and he's trapped. And you can tell though, Mike Michael doesn't think that he's actually dead, that it's not gonna work. But in the moment, that's what they're gonna go with. Right. Yeah, but, I left that whole that whole scene out, which made no sense to me whatsoever. All of a sudden, Jody says. Yeah, let's take that bastard up there and throw him down the mine shaft, a thousand foot hole. I'm thinking, yeah. right? Wait, what? How, yeah. how and why would that yeah. foil him? And, and I couldn't believe that that's actually what happened. Yeah. He also said, that "I have to. I'll go up and I will disguise the mine shaft." But he forgot the sign that says "mine shaft" this way. <laughs> and I remember when that scene was happening, like when that sequence was happening. Um. Looking over at Lauren and saying, I have no fucking idea where we're supposed to be right now. <laughs> but then they show you that it's the mine shaft, which is just some nondescript square hole in the ground. It just happened so quickly and so perfectly. Yeah. And it's dumb. That's their hard, that's their hardy boy, you know, solving the problem yes. in the monsters trapped under the rocks. Right. Um but it, but thinking I mean, it is cool when you're like Michael doesn't think he's dead, and we don't think he's dead, but Jody does. And then Jody dies, and then when Michael's back in his room, and things happen, you're like, "Yep, he called it. He knew that this is not how you kill them." So we get to the last scene, and I'll tell you, this is a scene where I totally did misunderstand the movie, because at the very end of the movie, we see Reggie and Mike at a fireplace. And we, we realize that Jody has died. And I thought that the whole movie had been a dream mm-hmm. and that, that Reggie 
was the guardian of Mike, which he is, mm -hmm. but I thought the entire movie was a dream. But I think what's really going on is between the time of the funeral home disappearing and the last scene in the movie, Jody died in a car accident. That's how I understood right. it. That's how a normal person would understand no, it. No, I no, I agree oh. with you. I we me and my wife said the same thing. It's like, oh, is this all a stupid fucking dream? It's like mm -hmm. a somehow a it's poorly communicated. I I think it's poorly communicated. Okay. at the very end there. Right. So it wasn't until I watched some other commentary on the movie that I understood it all happened, mm -hmm. and in between the second to the last scene and the fireplace scene, then Jody died. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think it's uh, unclear on purpose. Like, I think you're supposed to be confused oh, yeah. by it. Because I also, like, read... Because I was also confused. There's literally a Reddit thread that's like, what the F is up with the ending? But I read... Um, one theory was um, when Mike's making his little thing that, like, blows up the door, whatever that is, he has a <laughs> bunch of stuff on his desk, and it's like a white bust, which looks just like the inside of the mausoleum, has all those little white heads. There's a golf ball. There's, like, a bunch of things that, like... Some people think this whole thing has been in his head, and it's like a series of dreams that he's having where his brother actually died. But then I also read no. a thing where the mausoleum blowing up sent them into a different dimension, and this dimension Jody has died. Like, I just think you can ascribe any meaning that's, you want to the end. That's too much work. <laughs> it's, I didn't, I guess I'm, I guess I'm dull with a little imagination because I, I literally thought the end was, was as literal as it was there's a scene Jody dies in a car crash then there's by the fire and Reggie's in charge now Right. for me what, it was just jarring Reggie's because there was charge. literally there was literally no segue it was just like you go right from the, the like the mausoleum and the whole thing blowing up then like Jody's dying in a car wreck and then now like Reggie and him are left alone I'm like I don't know. I was. I was. Just, it just happened way too fast. I was like, "Wait, his brother just died!" Like they just fought the bad guys. And also, what bothered <laughs> me? What bothered me was that after they trap him under the mine shaft, I really wanted. Since this is a brothers film, I really wanted a scene where those two brothers had a moment of like, "Yeah, we did it. We got the bad guy." Even though Mike really doesn't think he's really dead, I still think there should have been a little celebration. Like I even wrote down, "I'm like, there's no celebration that they got the bad guy," and then he dies in a car crash. Like, wh <laughs> what is the timeline? Yeah. I was very focused on that and it bothered me. I kind of thought he, if he died in a car crash, it was earlier though. Like not after they defeated. No. But then they, the, they yeah. trapped him. They trapped him. In, he, Jody and Michael trapped him in the mine shaft. Then I wanted them to celebrate before Jody went off and drove to his death. <laughs> mm. I think that either explanation of this is a sign of lazy filming. <laughs> I, I, sorry. I think that that ending is stupid and if if we take it literally like like that which i eventually got to that point amanda like the same as you where it's like oh he <laughs> we're just supposed to be okay with oh well he died in a car crash and you don't know anything about it you don't hear anything about it like we just jumped ahead at some it's unrelated amount of time yeah but like we just spent this whole movie following this piece of shit around, and then we just find out that he dies in yeah. a car crash. He left his brother. That actually tracks because he's been like so close to blowing his own head yeah. off. And <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying he deserves it, but <laughs> yeah, I <sighs> would we have this much to say if we all read the Odyssey? <laughs> That's why I love this movie. <laughs> well, <laughs> are we going to talk about the last scene? Well, yeah, so at the very end, of course, Reggie and Mike decide to hit the road like we're getting ready for a good old road movie. In the morning. We're oh, going to yeah. go in the morning. Yeah, exactly. Hey, uh, you know how your brothers died in a car accident? You want to go take a road trip with me? <laughs> <laughs> and we can play some sweet tunes. We can, that's right. Oh, and he, this is when he has his little tiny ponytail, too. He yeah. Cut it down to like an inch, <laughs> <laughs> but still pulls it back. A little fireside chat scene. Yeah. Hanging and out. Mike looks like a full year older in this scene. Oh, this is this is an add-on. Yes, this is a this is like a a reshoot eight months later or something. <laughs> yeah, but I, I do like the ending. I like the little the jump scare mm -hmm. and the the unknown. Yep. 
So Mike goes upstairs to pack, and as he turns the mirror of his closet around, we see the tall man there in the room, and arms pull Mike through, seemingly into another dimension. Coolest part of the movie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it got me thinking about that closet mirror trick in horror movies. What do you think the earliest example of that is? It might not even be in a horror movie. Oh, where they close like the medicine cabinet and the things yep. in the background behind them. Yeah. I mean, that is, I'd love to see a compilation of those. Yeah. There must be a hundred of them. Mm -hmm. That's always effective to me. Yeah. yeah. And that's a cool one. Even if you're expecting yep. it, you're like, yep, it's going to be there. Oh, there it is. Yep. So, and that takes us through Phantasm. Closing thoughts? Phew. <laughs> <laughs> that was a lot. <laughs> yeah, I like some of the cheesiness of it. I like the kid. Um, I saw. I love the effects with the silver ball. That blood shooting out was awesome. Oh, yeah. I liked some of the sound effects. I did not think it was that scary. I, I'm not going to watch this again. I'm not going to watch any of the sequels. And I don't really want to know what it means. And I'm not going to think about it after I <laughs> leave this room right now. <laughs> So, sorry, that's where I'm at. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've gone around to liking this movie. <laughs> I don't know. There's just something about, like, the, like, dream logic and, like, the cyclical nature. Like, no matter what you do, it's still going to come for you. It's just going to take another form or another shape or another body or... Um, I think that I actually don't really mind that it's confusing and I don't need to know what it is mm -hmm. specifically. I just think it's like every other random weird dream where it's like, you know, there's something chasing you and you can only run in slow motion or you're trying to run away from something and you close your eyes and open them and you're in another location. You don't know how you got there. It's just like weird and confusing and I kind of like the atmosphere. Am I going to watch it again anytime soon? Definitely no. Will I watch the sequels? Possibly. <laughs> but am I going to have high hopes for them? No. <laughs> but I don't know. I think this is fun. I think it's weird as shit. And um, I think it's worth a, a single watch to see what you take from it and what it's worth to you. Hmm. I am going to directly quote <laughs> Dave Kerr of the Chicago Reader. It is spotty and effective here and there. <laughs> um, I, I, so this movie just doesn't work for me. Um, I, I the the very cynical side of me feels like the way that the story is strung together is like. It's like watching a Damon Lindelof thing where they didn't really know where it was going. <laughs> um, I think not having explanations for things is fine and cool, and I usually prefer it. But in this case, I don't think that they had any idea what they were really doing. I bet that the the Jawas almost read like a character, like a, a creature that wasn't fleshed out to me, which is why they had that weird little line of exposition when he gets pulled up from the vortex. Um, the tall man is, I mean, he looks cool, I guess, but he's, I, I don't consider him a very effective villain. The, I try to, I, now as I'm shitting on this, I need to try to remember though, that in 79, that sphere effect was probably pretty incredible. Mm -hmm. And because it was unexplained, it was pro it was probably shocking to an audience. To me, it's whatever. It's it's fine. That is like an interesting, surreal thing that happens in it. But there are so many problems with this movie and its structure for me. And its tone is uh, honestly the biggest problem for me is the tone. I don't really like any of the characters. I don't really like the bad guy. I'm not really scared of the thing because I don't know what the fuck the thing is. I don't see myself revisiting this movie. I am curious what it would be like if it had a real budget mm. and a structured shooting schedule and script and i would you know what i'd love to see i'd love to see the original script 
I would love to see what it looks like. I do think it makes a lot of sense knowing that this was three hours and they cut it down. Yeah. Like that actually solves a lot of the problems for me yeah. because like there either was more that was taken out or it's like just some hodgepodge of what was there that of course yeah. it doesn't make sense. They're like, this is the best. <laughs> this is the stuff that like looked the best is yeah. what we're going to leave in this movie because the rest of it didn't. Um, but again, the thing that I read after saying that this is truly like an amateur production made, made on a shoestring budget, there was no accountant keeping track. So they don't really know how much it costs, but they think it's maybe $300,000. Like I, I, I got to respect that. So actually, no, I don't have to respect it. I don't like this movie. <laughs> This movie almost works for me, knowing that it was shot in 1979. It kind of fits what I want and expect out of that era. I think, for me, the hero is really Reggie. Uh, I, lo I love Reggie. He's kind of awful, but he's got a, such a sweet truck, and he's such an unlikely hero mm -hmm. in this whole you know, I think he's in all five movies, yeah. which is amazing. <laughs> you know, uh, I think Mike, the character, is in all five movies, too, but not the actor. I think the actor is only in four of them. He got replaced for the second one. Right. I think he went on a spiritual journey, the actor. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. And so I don't think Phantasm was part of uh, of that journey. <laughs> That's so weird. It should have been. <laughs> can't right. imagine why. <laughs> <laughs> so... I think there are just some beautiful shots in this. I love the tall man. I think he's a great villain. He really is menacing and weird. I think if you took out the red planet, just that one thing, if you took that out, I think this would be a much stronger movie. You can keep the barrels. Keep the Jawas, <laughs> keep the mine shaft, keep the strange room, keep Star Girl and the Grandma, keep the other dimension even, but it doesn't go to a planet. I think you. <laughs> I think just that <laughs> one bit is just kind of makes the whole heap crumble for me, um, but. You know, I was so happy to revisit this movie. It's amazing how these scenes are so jarring as a kid. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of this movie will stay with me the rest of my life. So um, I think we're ready to give our vote for our <laughs> rankings. I love when we vote. <laughs> <laughs> I always have to look back at my previous ones. Oh, I never do that. <laughs> I, I do, because I was, I was sitting here thinking, yeah. I was sitting here thinking what I would give the rating to, what I would give it as a, the overall rating. Um, but I probably like this movie more than The Endless. But I probably like The Prowler more than this. But I feel like I'm going to give them all the same score, which seems wrong. Yeah, do it. Um, yeah. Looking so, back, all my scores are like... Wow. Yeah, yeah. So we basically reinvent what the scoring means to us each individually <laughs> every episode internally. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give Phantasm a 4 out of 10. I I didn't like this movie. There were a lot of... Again, I just spoke about it a little bit. Um, I wanted a little bit more. I do like Reggie as a nice foil character. I wanted more of him. There was a lot of things that... Like, in some of the reviews, they call it original. And there are a lot of elements that were... Um, Matt's rolling his eyes, but there were there were some <laughs> cool th things in it. Like I love that gore scene; that was really cool. Yeah. Like the um, when the sphere like shoots blood. I love uh, Mike biting the guy's arm. The fingers. Um, the fingers were awesome with the mac and cheese blood. Um, yeah, four out of ten. Just not 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 super enjoyable. Um, didn't hate it. Like it was it was fine. Um, and I'm sure at some point down the road, this film will come up in conversation. I'll be like, oh yeah, I heard of that one. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so for the scarometer, I did not think the movie was scary. I think I was, I wasn't even spending the movie trying to figure anything out, so I can't say that I was spending my time doing that instead of being afraid. Um, but again, if I feel like since this, if it strongly appeals to like young folks who were like 11 to 13 years old, I would have thought it was scarier then, for sure. 
Um, I'm just, I guess I'll give it a one out of five. I don't think it was very scary. I am going to give it a seven out of 10. Whoop, whoop. Yeah. I don't know uh, why. <laughs> I don't know why. But there's something about this that I like. Is it my favorite movie ever? No. Am I going to watch it again? Maybe in like 10 years. But there's just something interesting about it and something sort of different about it. So, seven. Uh, Scarometer, I'm going to give it a... Hmm, this is tough. I will give it a two. And it's only getting a two. I didn't find anything individually scary about it. But the overall not making sense in dream quality and confusion... <laughs> Mm -hmm. is why it gets two. There's just something about it that is very unsettling to me. Let me see. Scare meter, uh, I'm going to say zero. Mm -hmm. um, just, yeah, just not a, not a scary movie to me. Um, but, but Matt, it's supposed to be, if this one doesn't scare you, you're already, already dead. dead. <laughs> and oh, I shit. must be dead. <laughs> um, it, it just that this wasn't scary to me. And again, it's, it's, um, this is seeing a movie like this so many years after it came out, after seeing so many other horror movies, like, of course, I'm not going to be frightened by it. The concept, I guess, could be frightening, but it, its execution is not, not great for me. Uh, so I'm 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 sticking with zero. Overall, fear is the killer. Fear is the killer. <laughs> so I'm alive. Wow, nice. <laughs> um, uh, overall, I'm going to give it a three out of ten. Um, All right, yes, go Matt. <laughs> I, Matt usually go. You usually rate up. I usually and I I yeah I, and that makes me feel a little bit bad. But that is our lowest score. But I have to be That's honest. That's why I'm so ever. excited that Matt did it because yeah. usually Matt gives the high scores. I know I have, but I just have to be honest. I just don't. This movie just doesn't work for me. When you look at it against literally any other horror movie from that year, it's such a piece of shit. Oh come on, compared to Alien. <laughs> like I, I feel like I don't have to look very far to find 10 <laughs> other movies that came yeah. out that year that are horror movies that do what they set out to do a lot better <laughs> i if but i but i feel and i give it more than a zero because i feel like i'd be punching down because it's an it's an amateur production and whatever and, and yeah. it's beloved and i'm sure the filmmaker is a lovely guy if you're listening which you definitely aren't i'm sorry <laughs> i just didn't really like your movie i don't get it i and i'm i'm furiously trying to google uh a copy of your script to understand what the fuck could have made this an hour and a half longer. Um, the brothers, the it bro just, it's the brothers story. Maybe, but man. that's what he said. Yeah. Yeah. This movie, I just, yeah. yeah. Again, the, the, my biggest problem, what makes me know this is not a movie for me is that tonally just off, just doesn't yeah. work. Yep. It just doesn't work. And it lacks things. It lacks a couple of things that, I'm looking for, which is um, that it looks good. And I can think of one shot that I really liked in the movie. One. And score being effective, yeah, the main theme, it's fine, but nothing else is. And good performances. And only really the kid worked for me in terms of performances, I think. Reggie's fine, but he's mostly funny. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, this is a, this is a, like, Motor City Comic Con movie, you know, like it, it appeals to some, it appeals to a, a person that I just don't relate to. <laughs> <laughs> like Christopher and Allison. That's right. I don't he doesn't like, relate to us at all. I don't relate to you guys even a little people? bit. <laughs> well, Steve Barton of Dread Central gave the film a score of five out of five stars, calling it a masterpiece and one hell of a scary film. Wild. Mm. According to Wikipedia. What else does he like? Whoever Steve Barton is. Hmm. Well, I think I would give this movie a 6 out of 10. Um, of course, it went up during the discussion. Uh, I do have an appreciation of it. And like I said, the whole movie, I think, mostly works except that one element. So it it does have that dreamlike quality it also ha suffers, though, from 
the chuper factor, <laughs> which is just like random stuff thrown in. Yep. Things don't really follow one from the next. The acting is bad. It was this kind of magical era of filmmaking, I think, when people just wanted to make a horror movie mm-hmm. and it took them a whole year. But the fact that it took a whole year to make this movie, I think, is a little bit to its credit because they actually finished it. Mm-hmm. I mean, oh, Jesus, who wants to go be in a movie after a whole year of filming? That sucks. Mm-hmm. And the fact that they actually completed it, I think, is a testament to mm-hmm. just the will. Of- were they filming it like only on the weekends, though, too? Yeah. Only on the weekends and some of the days were 20 hour days, which is nuts. Awful, you know? Uh, so I give it a six on the, the movie ranking, and I give it a one for the Scarometer. It was really not so scary, but I am very nostalgic of the scenes that stick in my childhood brain uh, that really did terrify me so much. I think you mean, um... <laughs> I was debating whether to say, wow! <laughs> <laughs> wow. And if you like what you heard today and want to let us know, you can email us at whatscaresus at aadl.org. Thanks for joining us. This has been What Scares Us.